Code review is a fundamental part of every engineering team. And the idea is that any code written should be first approved by a human who looks over the code before it gets merged into the main line or the main branch of the repository. This ensures if the original author of the code leaves, then there's someone else at the company who has awareness or context of what's happening. And it also offers a mechanism to make sure that the code is actually understood and can be improved by other people working on the same code base. However, one thing I didn't realize until way too late in my career is that the primary purpose of code review is not to catch bugs. And in fact, there have been multiple studies which show that even introducing multiple rounds of code review isn't effective at catching bugs or functionality issues. A big part of the value of code review is actually social, both in terms of culture transfer and knowledge transfer. The back and forth you have during code review, for example, like, oh, did you consider this input? The interaction you have in terms of asking questions, and frankly, the memes that you leave when you accept uh, a code change, that is really where engineering culture gets made. And that is critical to the health and the growth of any engineering team. Because of how much time we spend reviewing code or writing code that will end up getting reviewed, here are some best practices I've learned throughout my career, which hopefully can be helpful to you. And quick side note, it's actually really interesting to me how different the terminology is across companies on what they refer to as a code change. For example, um, many of us are familiar with GitHub and they use pull request, GitLab uses merge request. At Facebook, um, we primarily use the terminology of diff or revision, so I'll pro probably be using that terminology throughout the video. Um, Google refers to a code change as a CL or a change list. Uh, at Amazon, they call it a CR or a change request. And then in many open source communities, they refer to it as a patch. By the way, as part of tech career growth, our community, Alex and I just gave a free live session about the best practices of effective code reviews. Um, and so th what you're seeing here is a very condensed version of what we covered. If you wanna look at the full recap, it's available in the Tech Career Growth mobile app. So I'll leave a link for that in the description. If you're new to a company, one thing that's really helpful to ramp up is to apply the code changes from one of your coworkers onto your local environment. And then look at their test plan, look at how they went about verifying the correctness of their change and actually try and emulate that and do the same thing on your local branch. And that will number one, help you ramp up in a very effective way, but it'll also be a really powerful way for you to give thoughtful feedback on their code change or on their diff. This is definitely not something which is expected when you're reviewing code because of how long it takes. The burden of validating the correctness or fixing bugs from a code change is always on the diff author and not on the reviewer. So what does healthy code review culture look like? In my opinion, healthy code review discussion should be on topics which don't have a clear cut answer, but they're still concrete enough to be debated. At one end of the spectrum, you have debates about architecture. So if you're having that kind of debate on a code review, things like the organization of modules or the responsibility of different classes, how the API should look, things have already gone wrong. And you should ideally have that agreement with your team before any code is written. And that kind of discussion should happen at a design review or architecture review way before any code is actually being committed. At the other end of the spectrum, we have a code review which is full of what we call nitpicks. These are small stylistic details like how much spacing should you have between lines? Where should the parentheses go? Or what should the format of your commit messages be? If you're spending a lot of time commenting on the code review for things like this, or even worse, if you're having a debate about the correct style on that code review, you should stop and have a meeting with the whole team and agree upon a standardized set of rules. And then you should delegate that work of mandating and enforcing those rules to a linter. So humans don't actually have to waste time updating or correcting people's style mistake. That should be all automated. And now you can actually focus on the more interesting work of what code review is designed for. The ideal discussion you want to see happening on code review is something in the middle of that spectrum. Things like the naming of a certain class or method, an idea of how to test something in a different way, or asking questions about some input which maybe the original author hadn't considered. There's a pretty famous analogy of how people think about a large code base, like you'll probably find at a large tech company. And the idea is that we're all blindfolded and we're like touching different parts of this elephant. And the elephant is this massive code base. And so we all are feeling different parts of it. And only when we come together, can we actually understand the whole picture of the elephant and what part we're touching, right? Um, and so the idea of healthy code review is that we, you all want to use your complementary knowledge of what you are aware of. Someone might have a more awareness of a certain part of the code base. And then together, you can help improve the overall um, system and make sure that it is more resilient to future changes. Here are four best practices when it comes to code review. First, 
the diff author should try and keep each code change to be small and logically grouped. So the idea is that rather than having a huge 1000 line code change, you really want to try and break that down into maybe five or six stacked diffs. So you can have changes that stack up on top of each other. And that will enable you to get a much faster review because as the reviewer, I now have a much better idea of what exactly changed here. One way of framing it is that every diff or every code change you have should have a single thesis behind it. So you should be able to clearly articulate what is the purpose of that code change. And then it's okay if you have 20, 30 code changes stacked up on top of each other, and that will lead to this whole feature or product being shipped. But each individual change should be clearly understood and clearly testable. Second, for changes which are largely automated, it's best to delegate as much work as possible to the computer. For example, if I'm making a really large scale change where I'm deprecating something or I'm renaming or refactoring a method, I might make a script to do that. And so rather than having to, as a reviewer, navigate this like thousand line or 10,000 line change, I can look at the script that you wrote, which is making that change and then validate the correctness of that. At a company like Facebook, there's actually dedicated infrastructure to support this. There was a bot called CodeModBot and basically you'd provide an input onto what large scale changes you wanted to make in the code base, right? Because you have literally millions of lines of code over a decade touched by tens of thousands of engineers. And so it's not really feasible for a human to go in and make changes because it'd be a ton of merge conflicts. So the code mod bot would automatically make these changes and then reviewing the change was as simple as validating that you have the correct inputs into code mod and maybe doing some sanity testing. My third tip for better code review is to be proactive about asking for feedback or comments on your own code review. Depending on the team or the company culture, it can be a scary thing to actually request changes on someone's code because essentially you're blocking them, right? You're, you're not going to let the code land until these changes are being addressed. And it could be a political thing or a power move to actually request changes in that way. And so when you're new to a team, you really want to go the extra mile to show that you're receptive to feedback and you can proactively leave comments to say, hey, I'm not really sure the best naming for this method, or I'm not really sure the best organization of this file. I'm open to feedback or suggestion. And that way, even though you're going to be moving a lot slower in the short term in landing this particular code change, longer term, you're going to have built up a lot more trust so that you can move a lot faster going forward. Finally, my last tip is to understand that having some back and forth in code review is actually quite common, but understand that there is some tax associated with each round trip. And there are some discussions which actually merit um, syncing up or waiting to see how the person is addressing the feedback I gave. But in a high functioning, high trust team, I would expect that most of the code changes will get approved relatively quickly because the team is in sync on what they want to achieve and how they want to achieve it. And so what I'll typically do with a code review, even if I have feedback, I'll say here are the three or four comments I would like you to address, but I, I will preemptively accept the code change. And I'm going to trust that you will go ahead and address them before you land it to the main line. And that kind of, that methodology will lead to a much faster way of landing code and shipping code. But it also allows for people to feel heard and for their feedback to be taken into account. The approach I outlined here for code review has been really effective for me to build up trust with the team and ship a bunch of code, both individually and as a team. One other really important part of code review is to leave gifts or memes or pictures on code review which express how you feel your sentiment and that's always been a really fun part of interacting with with my teammates if you have some favorites drop them in the comments i would love to take a look thanks for watching and i'll see you next one